This week on The Franchise. You just swing as hard as you can and close your eyes. For real? That's what, that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't seem really right. And you just hope the pitcher throws it and hits the bat. Yes! Oh! So there's a lot of changes to this team. Specifically on the defensive side of the ball, staff changes and personnel changes. Well, Spagnola and what he brings to the defense, uh, just the energy hit. level. Now we're getting the right idea. Now we're getting the right idea. Back what are going on? What did you be? I'm Cole Hartman. I uh, play at the University of Georgia. I uh, got drafted second round. In reality, man, football going to end one day. And um, I always had a great character. It'll take you a long way. A long past what this football can take you. This is home field advantage. Woo! That's good. Good. You're good, man. Keep it going. She loves dogs, just really animals like, in general. Keep going, girl. If you get her in, in an element like this with dogs around, I think that's when she's at her best. <laughs> oh my god, my It's amazing how fast time goes. It's it seems like yesterday we we're play in the uh, AFC Championship game and, and you snap your fingers and, and here you are, the starter OTAs. I remember when we first got here in, in 2013 and trying to attack free agency and approach players with this plan and this vision we had. And, but then to come from where we started in 13 to you know, kind of where we are now and players are, are calling us wanting to come here. And, and I think that's a cool thing for our franchise and, and our city. So it's just been a, it's been a cool process to see this thing from where it started to where it is now. It really never stops. Well, it's 4.30 in the morning, and, and I can almost guarantee you I won't be the first person here in the morning. If there's one thing I could, I could certainly bet my life on is that Coach Reed will be here. I swear the guy says he goes home, but I don't think he goes home. It doesn't matter if it was 4.10, 3.30, 4.15. His car is always the first one here. and. Um, uh, I'd like to say I've beat him to the office, but over a decade, I'd probably count on one hand how many times I actually beat him in because it's near impossible. A very pleasant good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Chiefs First Look, an exclusive opportunity for each of you to see for the very first time live the 2019 Kansas City Chiefs. Organized team activities. Known to many as OTAs, is the first time the 2019 Kansas City Chiefs will take the field as a team. And while this is an initial opportunity for the Chiefs coaching staff to work with their players, it's also a chance to establish the chemistry that will hopefully carry the team deep into January. But this practice in particular is special. As nearly 600 season ticket members are in attendance, hoping to get their own first look at the 2019 Chiefs roster. But there's something exciting about seeing the team for the first time mm -hmm. each year, isn't there? There is, and there's a lot of changes to this team. Specifically on the defensive side of the ball, staff changes and personnel changes. Well, Spagnola and what he brings to the defense uh, from what I've gathered so far, just the energy level. Go to work. Time's a-wasting, baby. That's the urgency. Put it, hit, hit it, hit, go. <laughs> Now we're getting the right idea. Now we're getting the right they, idea. They all sing his praise for being able to coach any part of the defense, and that's what you expect uh, from a defensive coordinator. But another facet that I think is going to really pay dividend is that teaching, Mitch. And I really feel like they've made dramatic changes in the position coaches under that defensive coordinator. I just don't know how much I want to give to everybody yet. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to go slow with it. You know, so I, I can go forever. <laughs> you know, that's how we are. That's how coaches are, right? That's when you have two weeks. It's like we mentioned like, teaching. We mentioned athleticism. <laughs> one of the guys responsible for that athleticism is the Chiefs' head trainer, Rick Burkholder, also one of the best in the league to ever do this position. Rick, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It, it's an honor to work for the Chiefs and be able to be with Coach for 21 years. But in 13, we came in here with a lot of fire, and the fire may be greater right now than it's ever been. 
you know, most of my neighbors and even my two daughters and my wife sometimes think it's the off season. It's not. It's just non season. <laughs> what? What's what? Define non-season. that. Non season. Like I'm going to no, use that just, one. <laughs> it's just non season for us. But my wife said the other night to me, she goes, "You're exhausted," and I said, "I am exhausted." But it's training camp mentality in mini camp. I've yeah. never experienced it before. I've seen it. These like guys it. don't leave. Nice. Wow. So so we get done at. We get off the field. They're, they're done at 2.30. They're, they're here till 7 o'clock at night working on their craft. Like, it is exhausting, but it's for a great goal at the end. And I look at it like a bank account. So this time of year, we're making deposits. And then when we get to camp, we're starting to really roll the interest over. That's when we're really building up the bank account. And then all fall, we just make withdrawal, make withdrawal, hopefully make the big withdrawal, buy the big house at the end. And then we'll do it again next year. But <laughs> this year, this, this, this year, growing wise, interest wise, phenomenal, off the charts for me. 27 years in the league, wow. off the charts, the buy in. I want to turn now to one of the men who really stitches all of these separate fabrics together. <laughs> Chiefs President Mark Donovan. Mark, good morning. Good afternoon, I guess. Good afternoon, guys. Yeah. How's everybody doing? It's been uh, exciting to be around this. You know, there were some days when it wasn't as exciting. <laughs> there were some days when it wasn't as fun. And every season has a different kind of challenge. Um, what we try to do is just be prepared for our success. There's so much to get excited about about this team. And let's just throw another log on the fire. That is, it is the 100th year of the National Football League. Well, just to be clear, I've only been involved in 20 of those. <laughs> <laughs> what we decided to do is go back to the initial site of Municipal Stadium to kick off our 60th season. So Clark will be out there, our rookies will be out there. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good, good to see you. How, how are OTAs? It's all right. Yeah? Yeah? Not, not too much running? Uh, uh, come on, come on. Come on. Uh, an Andy Reid offense, there's going to be some running. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a very special event for a variety of reasons. Our first year guys, our rookies are here, uh, our rookie free agents and our draft picks. You can give them a hand. The next person I want to introduce to you is involved in these celebrations at every level because we have a league celebration, but we also have our own franchise. Uh, give a big welcome to the chairman and CEO of the Kansas City Chiefs, Clark Hunt. Mitch, thank you very much. Great to be here with everybody today. This site was the site of the original Municipal Stadium, which was the first ever home of the 1963 Kansas City Chiefs. When you think about what we're doing on this site and that the Chiefs were playing there in 1963, what does that mean to you and the fact that we're doing this today right here? Well, I think it's so appropriate that we're back so close to uh, to the old Municipal Stadium. You know, today when people think of the Kansas City Chiefs, they think of Arrowhead Stadium. But back in the 60s, they thought about Municipal Stadium. Originally opened in 1923 as Mulebach Field, Kansas City's Municipal Stadium, which was located at the corner of Brooklyn Avenue and East 22nd Street, was the home of the Chiefs from 1963 to 1971. Prior to that, the stadium housed the Kansas City Monarchs, the Negro League's longest running team. And when franchise owner Lamar Hunt decided to move his Dallas Texans to Kansas City following the 1962 season, it would become the Kansas City Chiefs and the stadium would be retrofitted for football. While at Municipal Stadium, the Chiefs were successful representing the AFL in two of the four Super Bowls prior to the league merger in 1970. The Chiefs' final game at Municipal Stadium was played on Christmas Day of 1971. And although Kansas City would fall short in the meeting, the double overtime playoff contest lasted 82 minutes and 40 seconds, and still stands today as the longest game in NFL history. And Clark, you can talk about this, but this is awesome. This is going to be the new uh, plaque that will be at the corner of 22nd in Brooklyn to commemorate the history of Municipal Stadium. Our hope is that this will remind future generations of Chiefs fans what took place at Municipal Stadium. We don't want that to be lost, and that's a big part of the league's effort during this 100th season 
is to honor the communities and the fans that have helped make the NFL the game it is today. So, Clark, I'm going to bring up some folks now. Um, we're going to have a special uh, check presentation to be made to commemorate this day and the future of this location. Congratulations. Thank guys. you. And, yep, and thank a quarter of a million dollars to the Kansas City Public Schools. What we got going on? Before ending their day at Lincoln College Prep, the Chiefs rookies took the time to introduce themselves to the Blue Tigers. What a QB. Who the QB? Number nine? Yeah. He said he got the turnover chain, but he's the quarterback. He played quarter. Oh, hey, they, they did. Hey, direct snap, though. No, every the whole game, direct snap. Hey guys, here. Hey, if we can, why don't we just go and kind of snake around the line here and do them the service of introducing yourself. Let them know. Your I'm Cole Hartman. I uh, play University of Georgia. I uh, got drafted second round. In reality, man, football gonna end one day. And um, biggest thing I had when I was in high school was just respect I had of everybody around me, your coaches, your teachers, everything, because they're going to take you a long way. So everything you're doing right now, like, it matters. I don't, you might be mean to a teacher, mean to a kid in school. Just be aware of what you do. Just be respectful of everybody. I always have great character. It'll take you a long way, long past what this football can take you. Chiefs on three, Chiefs on three, Chiefs on three. One, two, three. Chiefs. As OTAs roll on at one Arrowhead Drive, a number of players are hoping to make an impact. Among those looking to find a spot on the final 53-man roster is third-year wide receiver Garrick Dieter. Oh, boy. Since entering the league in 2017 as an undrafted free agent, Dieter has spent most of his time on the practice squad before being elevated to the active roster late in the 2018 season. In week 17 against the Oakland Raiders, Dieter would finally take the field, recording his first official NFL catch and routes to cementing a third straight AFC West title. For this first National Football League catch, and Dieter up to the 41-yard line, gaining 22 yards. This season, Dieter is looking to build on his increased role within one of the most talented wide receiving cores in the NFL. And while he spends the majority of his time with his teammates on the field, Dieter is looking to spend some quality time with another kind of teammate off the field. Look at, oh, he's cute, he's cute. What's that one, Sam? Octavia. So fancy. I love you. Color Tavy for short. Tavy, you are sweet. How are you? Good, how are you? This is my husband, Garrett. Hi there, nice to meet you. I'm Madison. Addison, Gary, nice yeah. to meet you. Oh, so excited to be here. Yeah. Been looking forward to like all, of, you know, year long pretty much. Oh, yes. She loves dogs and really animals in general. She's like, keep going, girl. If you get her in, in an element like this with dogs around, I think that's when she's at her best because um, she just shows a, a different type of energy You're towards so dogs. Cute. Oh my God. She works with them every every week and she loves it. And that's one of the things I love about her because we treat our dogs like kids at home. So um, it's something that I want to come out and support her because I know she always supports me with whatever I do. So. It's something that uh, we both look forward to. <laughs> All right, Gary, we better head back and help Jamie. Dogs are just like, and the stuff's going out of their mouth. <laughs> we met through uh, Twitter, DMs. Slender DMs about six years ago. What's his name? Batman, I like it. Other than putting the ring on the finger, it doesn't really feel like much has changed, but um, I'm, I'm not sure what she'll say about that. For us, just to get out and do something together like this, it's rare. Um, even right now, it's it's like I gotta stay in shape. I gotta do something every single day, and she works, so it's, we we don't get to hang out too much. But really, animals in general is a huge passion of both of ours. We have three French bulldogs at home, and anytime we can go out and help, either do what she does or just come out and, and support people that do it. Um, we try to take full advantage of it. Okay, we'll take her off your hands, guys. Fine. <laughs> So we got Goose here. He's uh, named after G's college nickname. Um, and then, of course, he needed a buddy. But we joke that every time we move somewhere, we get a new one. So <laughs> we've got the uh, Bowling Green guy, the Bama boy, and the Kansas City girl. I was back home in Cleveland working at the donut shop, which was my summer job. And I got a direct message. 
I mean, found her on Twitter, sent her a message, <laughs> and asked her to hang out. And she wasn't there in the summer, so I had to wait like two months, I think. So we were just texting the entire summer, and we finally met up, and it felt like we knew each other right off the bat. So we got off to a, a good start and never looked back. Gee. I remember spending Saturdays watching you stand on the sidelines in your sweatpants during your redshirt season at Bowling Green. Recently, I spent a Sunday at Arrowhead Stadium watching you play in the AFC Championship in full uniform, whether you're winning the Super Bowl or losing a rec softball game. I'll ride for you forever. She wanted to be engaged like before any of the NFL stuff happened, so we went to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I told her we were going to go whitewater rafting, so all of a sudden like my mom called me and said that they shut down the park, so I'm just like, I'm freaking out. Well, it was so funny too because he told me to get ready, but he was very snappy. Then he started closing the blinds, and he really wanted to take a picture, so I started getting real stressed out. I'm like, oh my god, he brought me out here to kill me in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but it turned out to be the best surprise ever. Megan Elizabeth Kraft, I knew from the moment that I opened the door at 15C that we'd be here today. We were bound to fall in love. I think one of the things that made me fall in love with him was just the fact that he is so determined and knows what he wants out of life. And he told me he had this dream. And of course, you know, every football player wants to play in the NFL. So, I said, all right, let's do this and, you know, let's try to make it happen. But I just remember draft weekend. We waited and waited and then the second day came and went and that was the longest weekend of my whole life. I don't think I've ever cried so much. I'm sobbing in the bathroom and talking to my mom and he comes out and he's like, we're going to Kansas City. And I'm like, Kansas? What are we going to do there? Obviously, the dream was to play in the NFL, so we waited and waited and waited and never got a call. So um, I had a few free agent options. And I mean, at the time, I was just like, I didn't know much about the Chiefs. I was a big Packers fan growing up, so I really was leaning towards that. But something just told us to come to Kansas City and it's our third year in KC. And hopefully the season comes along and we have a, a good one. When you're on the practice squad, you feel like you should be there. So even when we would attend the games, it was awesome, but it was this just bittersweet moment, like you should be out there. Please welcome your Kansas City Chiefs. Every time there's just something, like we didn't get the invite to the combine, he didn't get drafted. There's always like this little thing that we're there, but we're not all the way there. Just to see him on the field, he looks so natural. And when you love somebody and you get to watch them do what they love, I mean, that's the best thing. It was just a, a special teams play, and that's like that was my role at the end of the season was play hard and play good on special teams. I got down there, and Julian Edelman looked like he dropped the ball. Edelman picks it up, fumbles it. It's picked up by Kansas City on the mouth. It's Gary Dieter. Gary Dieter for the touchdown. Well, it's going to be a rough because you can't advance it. It's going to be. On the field, everything was happening so fast. It looked like he just dropped it, and um, after the fact, I knew it didn't count, but at the time, it was just, it bounced right in my hand, so I knew I had to take off with it, and people bring that up to me all the time, and I just tell them, like, I agree with whatever they say. Like, they say it didn't, I say it didn't. They say it did, it did, it did, it did. so. You look back on it, like, I was on practice squad, like, five weeks ago, and I'm playing in the AFC Championship, and. I just knew that if you're not working hard, you can't play in this league. So for me, that's just the, the mindset I take every day. All right, same thing, both arms. Ready, three, two, one. Three, two, one. There we go. That's a good one. Okay. So three, production day is two, a day where one. we do everything for all of our media. Great. Today's a marathon. So uh, that's the hardest part is just keeping, keeping the energy up, making sure that you give every player uh, what you can, and uh, hopefully you get that back. We're gonna get a flex first. Flex looked right, I mean, it's that shot from last year, right? First things first, we have like a set list where we kind of just show them, hey, this is what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is show, show your back, 
And then it turns, was really about getting them comfortable we'll first, guy, right, making sure right, they understand right, what we're going to do. So it's a little bit about knowing the player, getting to know the player, and making them feel comfortable, and then asking them to do all the fun stuff. Ah! That's good. Go. Good. You're good, man. Keep it going. Get up just a little bit right there. This is home field advantage. Ah! Money. Love it. Great. Man. It's been a busy off-season for general manager Brett Veach and the player personnel staff, as they've acquired a number of new faces to help fill the Chiefs roster. For many of those players, production day is the first chance they'll get to sport the red and gold. Feels good, man. I had to, you know, get my little pregame ritual out, you know, lay out my uniform, figure out, you know, what shoes I'm going to wear, so... It was cool, man. I go through the little process today. You want to watch the pick on the new guy, huh? Hey, Always do arm sleeves. Always. You see it? You see it? They say it was picture day. It's hard not to be a, want to be a part of something, you know, like this. Something great. I mean, we see it, man. We see it every day. I know it was the same for this man. I know it was the same for this man. I mean, where else would you go to have a better chance of winning the Super Bowl than this? Honestly, I didn't know where I was going to end up. I was like super nervous, just like sitting there watching it with my family and everything. And now that I finally got picked up, I was just, I mean, I was so excited. Finally got the opportunity to put a jersey back on again, ready to go. So I'm going to take you back here. We're going to do some reads. They're going to be the ones that are going in stadium and in some of the videos. Mm -hmm. This is our house. This is our house. I seen that they came a little short of the Super Bowl uh, last year, so my goal is just to get here and step up and do what I gotta do to help this team get back to where we wanna be. Awesome. They're all done. All good. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. As production day comes to a close, so too does the Chiefs OTAs. And while all is quiet at one arrowhead drive, things are just starting to heat up across the parking lot. Since 2010, this star-studded event kicks off with a celebrity softball game at Kauffman Stadium, where amongst the dozens of celebrity guests in attendance are a few familiar faces to the Chiefs' kingdom. Hello, man. How you doing? How are you? Good, good. My son, How are you doing, man? Patrick, nice we to meet you. We in Los Angeles and, and root for you relentlessly. I appreciate that. So keep that. up the good work. Yes, man. sir. I appreciate that. Yeah. How you doing? You ready for today? Give me a hug. 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 You good? Yeah. You? Good to see you. What's up? What's up, man? Hey, I told uh, Stone Street, when uh, when you go up to the plate, I think I might run up there and grab the bat off you and give you the matumbo. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah they'll, they'll, they'll love it. They'll love it. <laughs> this is our first official ever, like, real meeting. I'm very excited. Good. Yeah, Good to like see you, man. Yeah. Where are you batting in the order tonight? I don't, I don't even participate because there's so many of us that we invite in. I mean, I'll take a swing or do something just to show that big guys can do things, too. Uh, but it's great event though, man. The trick is you just swing as hard as you can and close your eyes. For real? That's what that's what I'm gonna it do. It doesn't seem really right. Then you just hope the pitcher throws it and hits the bat. Is that a regulation size bat? It did seem short. He'll <laughs> <laughs> tell you that it did seem short. Can I use that as an excuse? Yeah. <laughs> I got center. I got center. I got center. I got center. All right, Kansas City. From your Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. Now, Patrick, what is your favorite movie? I mean, there's several great ones, uh, but I'll probably choose Ant-Man. Ant-Man, for sure. How great do you feel right now going into your next season? I mean, I feel awesome. Uh, I have a lot of talent around me. We're going to keep building and try to win the Super Bowl. We, is it me after this? Kiss it. Kiss it. Here we go, guys. Don't press it. Oh! Sir. Oh, I got three. Oh. Number 23, Selena Gomez.
you. No, I was in. No, I was in. Sliding in. Felt good. Sliding in. All right, I got you. Episode of the franchise. Wow. wow. Uh-huh. Here we go. Action. Oh! Now we're gonna move in a little bit. With training camp right around the corner, we relive a few of the best moments from the 2019 offseason. Obviously, our goal was to bring a Super Bowl here and we will go back to work. What do you want to see when you're seeing these guys. Do you want to see a guy dominating or do you want to see pretty good just head on head football? Chiefs on the clock and their pick is now in. Culture is what you make and how you grow it. This is my ball. That's what we're doing. We're going to grow it together. Miko Hardman. Everybody can go out there and be strong and things like this and do whatever they want to do, be athletic. Being able to think for your opponent, that's what really separates guys. The year two this is more of a team type of thing. I want to get past the AFC Championship. That's it. The static finally here. Meet the boys, meet the staff, meet everybody. Last year, obviously different circumstances. You know, I knew where I wanted to go, especially once teams started to reach out to me. It was, it was hard to turn down Kansas City. You know, a lot of people think as soon as the season's over that everyone kind of takes a break, and that's really not the case. Do you want to be great? My thing is, as great as you can be, at whatever you're doing, be great.